Hey, welcome back to another episode of Seeing If a Video Game Could Work as a Film. In this episode, I will be looking at a simpler game than a complex layered one that requires Wikipedia or a two hour long YouTube video to understand the narrative. Also, I will be handling things a little more differently this time around. So I chose Mirror's Edge as my guinea pig to see if this new method works, because the entire story of Mirror's Edge can fit on a piece of paper. Let's get started. Mirror's Edge's story is set in a utopia world that is completely run by corporations and government. Crime is mostly a myth, peace is dominant, and life is comfortable. But it is run by a totalitarian military regime. Quick translation, they always know what you're doing and they control all media outputs. The ones who rebel against this are the runners. They act as a form of communications for their clients that want the old ways back. In the center of all of this is Faith Connors, a runner that ran away from home and her only family is her sister, Kate Connors, who is a cop. A simple delivery job goes haywire when the police starts to shoot at Faith and the other runners for no reason. Things only get complicated when her sister gets framed for the murder of Pope. Unable to help her sister, she leaves with only a piece of paper from his diary that has the words, Project Icarus. It's a race against the clock to clear her sister's name and uncover what Project Icarus is. Mirror's Edge clocks in a two to three hour campaign. However, majority of that runtime is platforming or action set pieces. How much of it is really the story? Well, to answer that, I clicked at all the cutscenes, in-game cutscenes, and dialogue spouted out in non-cutscenes throughout the game. Our time comes to about 40 minutes. Next, I comb through them to see what moments are vital to the overall story and what can be taken out. Cutscenes take the bulk of the runtime and the story, clocking in about 16 minutes, offering the most insight into the world, story, and characters. There is only one scene that can be taken out, and that is Faith getting her cardio in. In-game cutscenes are another 16 minutes of runtime, mostly moving the plot along by setting up future set pieces, telling you the next location is at, or sometimes diving more into the story, but only a little. The big advantage that video games have over films is that it can still tell a story and develop the characters in the background while the player is running around. Sadly, Mirror's Edge does not take advantage of that. Most of the dialogue can be boiled down to get to the escape route, fight, or run Faith, run! Cutting all that out brings our runtime down to 35 minutes. Wow, that's barely under half of the average movie runtime. 35 minutes worth of story spread out two hours of gameplay. Does that mean Mirror's Edge could work as a film? I mean, all they must do is add an extra hour worth of story and character interactions, right? Well, things get a little trickier from here. Let's pick out all the plot points and see how they are structured. We have the police shooting at runners, Faith's sisters being framed for Pope's murder, Project Icarus, Jackknife being shady, the police chief and Faith not seeing eye to eye, Rope Burn being a prime suspect, the mystery assassin, and defying the system. All of this is connected through the heart of the story, saving Faith's sister. How does Mirror's Edge structure this? By using an episodic structure. This allows them to focus on different plot threads in each chapter. Does it do it well? No. The story feels like an afterthought just to connect all the set pieces together. You can barely grasp Jackknives, Cells, Mercs, and Rope Burn's personalities and background. Heck, Faith doesn't have a character arc. Mirror's Edge is very focused on being a video game than anything else, which is fine for it, but does cause trouble for adapting it to film. First off, films can't do an episodic structure unless it was going to be multiple films. They would have to completely restructure the game's story for a constant flow. So that means a lot of areas and set pieces will sadly vanish. Second, with there barely being any source material to work with, and that may cause a lot of problems for the writers because they don't know if they're writing something that will appeal to the fans or will completely alienate the fans. If any filmmakers could patch these two issues up, then Mirror's Edge could be a very solid video game movie. Well, that is of course the people behind it care about the project 
and not only milking it for money. So, to sum it up, Mirror's Edge length isn't the problem like most of video games. Its story is so simplistic and short that they could capture the majority of the story while adding character development and world building that the game doesn't have. However, they do have to worry about the game's episodic structure and not having a lot of source material to work with. What do you guys think? Could Mirror's Edge be a film? Leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. And this is Chris Anderson, signing off.